news story and that was the longest January I have ever lived through. Our world is full to the brim of bad news. There are numerous people who feel like life has ex either excluded them, for some life is a boring waiting room, for others it's just an overwhelming pressure cooker. And there are many who are poor and needy in all sorts of ways. There, there are many who feel abandoned as they nurse a broken heart alone or even in a crowd. Many feel trapped by circumstances of life beyond their control. Some wake up at night wondering how we got here and how we'll get out of this mess. Many feel consumed by darkness, fumbling for a way out and dark thoughts threatened overwhelm and hope is nowhere in sight. Other days, other days we're okay. I want to invite you to listen to some amazing words of Jesus as he announces what he came to do. And it may surprise you, the scene is fascinating. Jesus, this carpenter's son, is asked to read from the scrolls in the meeting house, and this is what he chooses to read. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he spoke these words and he sat down and everybody stared at him. And those listening were gobsmacked. Is he saying what I think he's saying? Is he claiming that he came to do this? This was of course an ancient prophecy from the prophet Isaiah and he was using concepts that were pre previously assigned to Moses and Cyrus. But he, and yet he attributes this special unique calling to himself the, the, the street Bible says this, that these words have come to life right here, right now, in 3D. And as much as Christianity is often predictable and stuffy, Jesus was nothing like either of those. The Gospel is constantly described as good news. Jesus brings about the homecoming for the prodigal, a belonging for the marginalised, a welcome for sinners. Whilst poor may include those economically challenged, it's about being it's 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 more about being spiritually impoverished. The thing the poor have in common is that they know they need help. Self dependence insulates us from the need of God's salvation. The good news is particularly exciting for those who recognise their need of God, and Jesus is proclaiming Himself as the good news. It's not just the message He carries, but the liberty that He brings. And the nature of God's salvation is like a poor man receiving news of economic relief. It's like a prisoner being set free. And, and, the, and, and like the recovery of sight to the blind man. Seeing sunlit, sunlight from the prison cell and a broken heart person crushed by hurt and pain marvelously made whole. From poverty, heartbreak, captivity and oppression to relief, wholeness, freedom of hope. That's the nature of God's salvation. And Jesus says he's come to bring freedom, not condemnation. This is exactly what we see, and as you'd expect to see in the Gospels, as others encounter Jesus. Uh, Daryl Bach, one of the commentators, says that these miracles that you see Jesus doing all over the Gospels are an audio-visual of deeper realities that are at the centre of his work. See, the leper is ma who was marginalised as an outcast was included again and belonged. The demon possessed was set free and praised God. The paralyzed man let down through the roof was healed, but he was also forgiven, declaring that the greatest freedom he required was not released from his crippled body, but forgiveness of his sins. The blind man is given back his sight, but more significantly, so that he could explain spiritual blindness and see the light of the world before him. These are the many colors of freedom, freedom that are visible in the gospel accounts. And every encounter, every encounter with Jesus displays some aspect of man's bondage and a release of Jesus' fragrant freedom. Right now, COVID-19 and its restrictions on everyday life may feel like the biggest joy sapper, the biggest freedom squasher and the heartbreaking cause that we'd all love to be delivered from. And I'm sure one day we will. But however, perhaps the biggest impact of the pandemic is that it has exposed a deeper need perhaps been cut off from each other, been stuck with our own thoughts and we're too long to reflect on them. We are discovering that all is not well within society and all is not well within us. And the reason the good news is so good is because the bad news is worse than we imagined. Bear with me for a moment, but mankind in the scriptures is described as being spiritually dead, as being enslaved by sin, in bondage to decay, trapped in darkness and just plain lost. 
these words, although they sound harsh, perhaps accurately describe humanity more now than ever before. You see, God reminds us of our spiritual condition, and he's not trying to get a dig in. He does it so that we would cry out to the liberator, and that we would take his hand to freedom. Jesus is the saviour, the liberator, our rescuer. He came to save his people from their sins. Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 8, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Another place he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And, 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 and one, of the, one of the writers I was reading has lovely words. He says this, But, but notice who is among those listed by Jesus using the, word of the words of the prophet, the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed. Clearly, this is the same type of list found in the Beatitudes of both Matthew and Luke. It is the list of people humanly regarded as lost causes, but yet who, at the hand of Jesus, came to know the blessing of the kingdom of the heavens. You see, it cost the liberator everything to offer us this freedom. Jesus, though rich, became poor by giving up heaven for earth. He had such love for you and me that it meant his heart was broken as his father abandoned him because he carried our sins. He exchanged his independence to be a death row prisoner so we could know freedom. And his hope was snuffed out as he breathed his last so that our blind spiritual eyes could be open as he floods us with hope. Perhaps COVID has done us a favour of exposing our spiritual need of help and unearthing spiritual stirrings within us. Like everything, we have a choice as to how we respond. We can remain in spiritual poverty. We can remain hurting from our past pains. We can remain entrapped by destructive ways of life and blind to our way forward. Or we can welcome the liberator to bring change, to experience the good news of belonging in God's family, the joy of being made whole again, the euphoria of being set free from the bondage of sin and the beauty of of swapping blindness for hope and spiritual sight. So wherever you keep, whether you keep the liberator Jesus at arm's length or you invite him is your choice, but he's only ever a prayer away. What you decide will have profound implications on your life and on those around you. Next time you consider what Jesus wants with your, wants with your life, may you remember the positive reasons he claimed to have come. See, God's forgiveness triggers a fresh start under new management, enabling us to love God and others as we experience victory over sin. True freedom is bundled up in God's good purposes when his story intersects with ours. Knowing the Saviour personally changes everything. I'm your host, Matt Totterby of Bondora Bible Reflections. Have a great day.